Hello everyone, today uh, we are going to talk about Buddhist ethics, that what is uh, uh, the ethical claim of Buddhism and what is Buddhism all about. It is going to be more in the form of a story, when we find the, uh, uh, what is it that led into uh, uh, Buddhism as uh, both the philosophy and the religion and the code of conduct and the ethics that it brings about. So, uh, many of us may be familiar with the story of Buddha, but uh, for those who are not, let me briefly recapitulate, uh, what is the story of Gautam Buddha or uh, Siddharth. Now, Siddharth was a prince, uh, born in, a, uh, in the foothills of the Himalayas in uh, 563 BC. And now, uh, Prince Siddharth was of uh, royal descent, he was the son of a king. And uh, 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 legend had it at that time, that when the king was blessed with a son, uh, that the son would be uh, either a great uh, ruler or a great saint. So, uh, uh, the king naturally being interested in wanting his son to be his successor, uh, uh, did not want the son to, uh, or Siddharth to become a saint and wanted him to become a rather a great ruler. So, the king insulated uh, uh, the pr young prince from any visions or any uh, visions or any, any uh, aspects of society, which would perhaps trigger, uh, trigger a uh, saintly pursuit. So, uh, he kept him uh, comfortably in the palace and uh, with a lot of comforts insulated from the uh, world out there. Well, uh, Siddharth, uh, on one of his sojourns, saw uh, uh, human uh, uh, societies, and uh, one might uh, call it destiny, or one might uh, uh, not choose to call it destiny, but well, Siddharth did take a look at uh, uh, human life, as it is being lived in the world out there, outside his uh, palace. And that is where, uh, that started to set him to think, that well, what is the, uh, uh, he saw the sights of a uh, aged man, of a uh, old man sick, and a dead body, a person being born. Now, uh, this caused him disillusionment. Now, this is uh, what perhaps uh, uh, is uh, the most popular uh, notion of Buddhism, that well, which claims that, well, life is full of suffering. That life is full of suffering. And this is perhaps one of the uh, crucial uh, comments, or crucial uh, claims, that uh, is popular about Buddhist ethics. But let us look at it this way, that what does Buddha mean, that well, uh, life is suffering. But anyway, let me continue his story. Uh, now, this young prince, uh, Siddhartha, as he was known then, uh, saw these sights of uh, uh, old age, disease, sickness, and birth, and death. So, and then he uh, thought that, well, why is there so much of suffering? And what he could see all around, was a lot of suffering. That uh, uh, people were suffering, that even happiness and joy that we see, is only intermediary between sufferings. So, that made Gautam Buddha, uh, ma made uh, Prince Siddharth, go out in search of, what is it, that can uh, give one escape from suffering. So, uh, he left his palace, and uh, uh, a father, whose heart was broken. Uh, and he went out into the forests, as it was the practice then, to dwell on, what could be the reason for uh, uh, this suffering, and what could be, and how could a uh, liberation for the same be attained. After six years of uh, uh, rigorous, hard penance, and an ascetic life, uh, Sri Prince Siddharth was still nowhere close to finding a solution. So then, he wanted, uh, he, 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 he uh, discarded the ascetic life, and took the middle path of leading a, uh, 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 an ascetic life, but not with 
uh, uh, the rigor that he was living up to then. Then uh, he had this, uh, what is regarded as the uh, uh, as enlightenment in the Buddhist history, is that when sitting below a tree, uh, Prince Siddharth had an enlightenment and could form his philosophy about life. And since then, he was known as uh, the Buddha or the Gautam Buddha. Now, and since then, he's uh, 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 propagated or he's uh, counselled uh, the people around there, and what came uh, uh, and what then thereof what came to know came to be known as Buddhism, both as a religion and philosophy. It is both a religion and philosophy because it also talks about the fundamental questions. It it uh, debates, delves, and reasons into giving its justifications. It is also a religion, because it provides a code of conduct, a way of living, a way of uh, uh, conducting one's life, a set of uh, guidelines. So, Buddhism is both a philosophy and a religion, just like Jainism and Hinduism. So, uh, now Buddhism, uh, uh, we see that, well, this is briefly the history of uh, the journey of Prince Siddharth, from an opulent uh, uh, princely childhood to a to an ascetic uh, middle age to a uh, enlightened soul. Now let us also uh, know the historical background that well Buddhism was at a time uh, five centuries before Christ and uh, it is then when Hinduism was very popular but it had become very ritualistic the caste system. Uh, was uh, uh, present, and that uh, Buddhism arose as a, perhaps many scholars see it as a reaction to the hardcore uh, uh, Hinduis, uh, Hinduism pre prevailing there, and it became wildly popular. And Buddhism even spread to various far uh, East Asian countries, including Burma, Japan, Tibet, and other nations around, and it was quite popular. So this having the his uh, uh, rejected uh, having. Uh, 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 placed the trajectory of Buddhism. Now, let us come back to what Buddha talks about. Now, whether this fundamental claim that we have written, that life is full of suffering. Now, this is where we need to spend some time, that whether life is full of suffering, and is it a pessimistic reading. Life is full of suffering. Now, is this a pessimistic reading? But before we go into analyzing this, let us uh, try to understand why Buddha, the Buddhists uh, or uh, Buddha made such a claim. Now, Buddha made such a claim because, well, he observed that, well, whatever uh, uh, and however we lead life through whichever stages, the only thing inevitable is suffering. Because even the moments of happiness or pleasure that we have, is because of uh, 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 is is, is uh, uh, placed between periods of suffering. That we have disease, that we have death, that we have uh, uh, old age, that we have uh, decay, that we have uh, impermanence, that we have things changing. That is what makes uh, something. That is what makes life so full of suffering, according to Buddhist. It will perhaps not be a pessimistic reading, as much as he, he would like to call it a factual uh, statement of affair. That, well, uh, the entire uh, uh, futility of human existence, or human predicament, as it is uh, uh, said, that uh, we labour hard, and we achieve, and we toil, and uh, uh, we relish it, but then it is all transitory, it gets away. So, imagine what is happening in uh, Prince Siddharth's mind. Well, he is born in a very comfortable situation, set to rule, and he could have a life full of pleasures, or happiness, and uh, morally justified happiness, not a life of rampant pleasure. Yet, what is it that uh, disturbs him? That disturbs him is that, well, that we are. Uh, even the prince is not immune to disease, not immune to decay, not immune to uh, death, not immune to having things go away. In short, not immune to impermanence. So, uh, uh, 
wherever we find that, uh, let us transpose it to today's uh, life. Like, uh, uh, if we are tending, we, we tend to believe that, well, perhaps that was true on that time. Well, it is uh, perhaps not so, if you just look at around us, that whatever our pursuits are, we are still uh, a part of the uh, simple, prof yet profound uh, observation, that there is a, a birth, a growth, a, a, a middle stage of uh, equilibrium, and then there is a decay and death. That death is a part of li uh, life, that death is an inevitable uh, part of life, is too obvious for us to perhaps strike us in our day to day living. But no matter what, whatever we wish, we desire, we achieve, our loves, our triumphs, our uh, uh, achievements, are still uh, uh, susceptible to uh, our, the death of the agent, to the decay of the agent, to change. So, at a, at a more deeper and more fundamental level, what is an happiness? And happiness, looking for a happiness that lasts forever. Now, many religious texts talk about eternality, that uh, eternal happiness, eternal bliss. What is it that when we are looking for eternal? Why eternal? Why eternity is uh, revered in so many texts? Uh, because eternity is a liberation from impermanence, from change, from uh, unhappiness, from suffering. So, uh, uh, when, when we say, when the Buddhists say that, well, uh, life is full of suffering, well, Buddha is trying to say that, no matter for what all our achievements are, uh, we still have suffering as a part of it, because our achievements are just uh, an intermediary between phases of suffering. So, is this a pessimistic reading? I would leave that on to the audience to decide, leave it open ended. Uh, let me look to explore another perspective. The second perspective that I would like to explore is, what is the nature of happiness or satisfaction. Now, for many of us, who would like to argue, there is a, uh, one could explore this angle, that well, when the Buddha says, that life is full of suffering, perhaps, he has not got his understanding of the notion of happiness and human life as uh, uh, um, right. Why do I say so? Now, this claim would claim that, well, happiness exists only because unhappiness exists. Sorrow is necessary for joy. So, uh, this school of philosophy, which could be uh, 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 regarded as the existentialists, or those who believe that life has to be lived, that the human predicament is in oscillating between the two extremes. Between joy and sorrow, and this is what makes life meaningful. Okay, now, what is this point? Now, we have a very popular uh, um, uh, understanding of uh, uh, the human spirit, uh, or uh, the human predicament of existence, that well, we have happiness only because we have unhappiness, we have sorrow. So, uh, we need the darker shades to uh, realize the lighter shades. So, uh, there is nothing to uh, worry, or, uh, or, or uh, 
uh, gloom about suffering, but rather look at it as a necessary uh, condition for us to experience joy. Now, Buddha is against would call this also suffering. So, uh, a life of activity, a life of uh, uh, defeats and triumphs, of overcoming odds, where the human spirit, so to say, vibrates energetically, as uh, uh, a part of a meaningful life, is also not what convinces Buddha as the good life. Because, as a ruler, uh, what is regarded in uh, Indian philosophy as a Rajasic life. Uh, a ruler would have a very Rajasic life, and would have all the pleasures, or all the triumphs, tribulations and achievements, that uh, uh, human existence presents. So, it is a life, where one has to uh, uh, struggle, fight, win, lose, and that is what makes a game uh, worth playing. So, yes, the existentialist would claim that, well, thank God we have sorrow. Because we have sorrow, so we can uh, 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 struggle to alleviate it, and then we have uh, happiness. But this would be the existentialist reading of sorrow, that sorrow as a necessary darker shade to bring about, uh, bring uh, into focus the lighter shade. So, um, sorrow is a necessary part of human existence, and how we can get uh, rid of it, should not matter to us. Rather, we should try to maximize our happiness possible. Well, the Buddha is still not convinced. The Buddha's claim, or uh, Siddharth, looks for eternity, looks for permanence, looks for happiness, or satisfaction, that is eternal. Looks for this escape, from what he regards as the cycle of uh, uh, ignorance, pain, suffering, pleasure, and again, uh, binding. So, uh, throughout Indian philosophy and Indian ethics, uh, an esoteric strain is seen, uh, uh, which many have critiqued as an escapist strain. But for uh, 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 many could also see it as a desire to see something which is uh, uh, liberating, which is liberating from mundane human existence, as a uh, metaphysical or ontological uh, new state. But anyway, so. Uh, we see that, well, when Buddha claims that life is full of suffering, well, he has his justification. He is making a claim that, well, no matter what we do, where we are placed, human life essentially has suffering. And that, because we may love, gives us happiness. But we lose, and we inevitably have to lose, gives us sadness. So, it is uh, uh, perhaps a part of human nature to be. Uh, um, a part of human nature, to uh, suffer. And that is what gives us meaning. But, Buddha does not agree with that. He wants an escape from suffering. That well, life is full of suffering. And what is the way out? He refuses to reconcile with uh, the claim, that well, suffering is what makes life meaningful. He thinks that, life has to have something more, which makes it uh, uh, eternal, which gives him the liberation from impermanence. We will talk about impermanence, uh, in some time. Well, that there is suffering. Now, this comes out to be the first of the four noble truths, as popularly regarded. So, the first noble truth is that, life is full of suffering. And, uh, or uh, existence is Dukkha, as it is regarded. Now, what is the meaning of Dukkha? Dukkha would mean, well, sorrow in the psychological sense, but at a uh, deeper sense, it would mean impermanence. And this impermanence is the cause of all suffering.
Well, look at it this way. Now, uh, when uh, Buddha puts his uh, points out to uh, uh, suffering, he is making a claim that well, what is suffering? What claim is he making? Well, there is suffering. And where does suffering come? He does not discount the pleasures and the joys we receive. But what he calls as suffering, because on the larger scale, he sees that these pleasures and these joys, are just a, 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 a facade, or a transitory, a temporary benefit. It is like this, uh, if, if I may be permitted to make a naive analogy. We are sitting in a train, or a plane, which is about to crash. And in that, uh, but it is about to crash, uh, crash in say, uh, a long time. And we have no escape from the train. But right in the train, we have a lot of uh, goodies. We have uh, uh, good books to read. We have uh, good people to interact with. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, good food to uh, eat. And we have a uh, comfortable life to lead. So, inevitably the train is going to crash. Now, there are various ways of, uh, uh, how people would make peace in such a situation. That well, when death becomes imminent, people uh, have different philosophies. But, in such a situation, there could be a person, who would say that well, uh, death is imminent, and the crash is imminent. But, I can still make good of my, uh, whatever time I have on this train. Uh, someone could say that well, if death is imminent, then all these things, uh, all these uh, goodies, and all these comforts, that we have around ourselves, does not matter. That is what Buddhism talks about. That when death is imminent, where decay is imminent, and where loss is imminent, it does not matter, that we have whatever highs of joy and pleasure. So, what is this death, or what is this change? Not, not necessarily the human death, it is the whole uh, abstracted notion of impermanence, that we do not have permanence. Impermanence is a fact of life, but to begin with any philosophical thinking, one does not have to regard facts and absolute. It is the liberation from the factual domain, that is uh, the beginning of uh, philosophical thinking. That you are no more enamoured, or captured with how things are, but how things could be. So, from th that necessarily requires you to be liberated from how things are. So, uh, coming back. Now, uh, uh, I see that, uh, Buddha making this claim, like the person sitting in the train. That well, when the crash is imminent, I would like to seek something, that would make, whatever happiness I can enjoy, as eternal. And if, whatever happiness I can enjoy, is not eternal, then it is really not happiness. It is suffering, in the guise of happiness. So, uh, impermanence is what is known as Dukkha. Impermanence is what is known as suffering. So, as long as things are impermanent, it is a, uh, uh, the final calculation is, that it is a part of Dukkha. So, the first noble truth, that uh, uh, Buddha uh, uh, proposed, was, uh, that life is full of suffering, that existence, human existence is Dukkha, and Dukkha is to be understood as Anitya, or impermanence. Impermanence is the source of all suffering. Now, the Buddhist ethics is, uh, first stage put forth, as the four uh, uh, noble truths, um, that Buddha realized, which were, which are profound by themselves. Although, they may appear simple by itself, uh, at the first glance. Now, what is uh, the second thing, that, uh, uh, second noble truth, that Buddha talks about, is the doctrine of dependent origination, or which is known as Pratitya Samutpadvad. Now, what does this mean? It, is, it means, well, it is the doctrine of dependent origination. That well, what it simply means, is that, suffering is not an accident.
it is caused. So, suffering has a cause. Now, contrast Buddhism as a, a, a reaction to Hinduism of that time, which greatly uh, perhaps uh, propagated uh, theory of uh, fatalism, or uh, uh, that many of the inc uh, incidents in life were a part of one's desert, and therefore unalterable. Now, Buddha makes a change over here. He regards suffering as an event, which is caused. So, there is a cause to suffering, and uh, uh, if the cause is removed, suffering is removed. So, uh, the second noble truth is breaking down uh, uh, in four sequences. Now, the, se the four noble truths break down in sequence, the understanding of uh, Dukkha and its uh, elimination. So, suffering is, an, uh, is not an uh, uh, accident, it is rather caused. So, what is this uh, suffering about? Well, uh, suffering is not as a result of chance. Now, coming to uh, what exactly are these, uh, what is suffering? So, uh, we say that well, there are uh, the, the Buddhists claim that there are 12 links of suffering. And what are these links? Well, let me first put them down for you to go through, and then we will talk about in detail. Ignorance or avidya. Karmic impressions or sanskar. Initial embryonic consciousness, or Vijnana. Embryonic psychophysical organism. or Nama Rupa. Six sense organs, mind included. Sharayatana. And then, there is uh, sense object contact, or sparsha. There is sense experience. or Vedana. Have thirst for sense objects. Trishna. Then, we have clinging, which is Upadana. Then, we have will to 
बी बॉन और भाव बर्थ और रीबर्थ इज नोन एज जाति एंड फाइनली वी हैव सफरिंग सिकनेस ओल्ड एज एंड डेथ इट इज जरा मरण ओके now these are 12 classifications that you would perhaps find in any of uh, the textbook dealing with uh, uh, buddhist ethics what is it trying to point out it is uh, called the 12 links a part of the second noble truth in in a part of diagnosis that when first it makes a claim that well uh, um, uh, suffering or exist uh, suffering is a part of existence and because existence has this necessary na- nature of impermanence and therefore uh suffering is a part of uh, uh existence and then and therefore impermanence is a fa- part of existence and therefore impermanence causes suffering so suffering is inevitably tied up with existence and if suffer and, and this suffering or this impermanence is caused it is not an accidental or uh, unnatural uh, uh, import there is a cause for it there is a reason why it is there and the reason is analyzed into these 12 links that well uh, which is uh, uh, what we have seen here that well if you look at it now the first two are to do with past life so ignorance and uh, uh, avidya and sanskar these are uh, part of our past life and they come from our past life what we do we are born because we have initial embryonic consciousness now this is also putting forth the metaphysical claims of uh, uh, buddhism that well we have initial embryonic consciousness and therefore we are born we have this uh, nama roopa or then we become a psychophysical organism and the part of the psychophysical organism we have six sense organs which is the sharyatna and these sense organs uh, have contact with objects out there and the moment we have this sense object contact this sparsh we have sense experience or Uh, vedana now this vedana is what calls uh, which causes the thirst for sense objects or trishna and this trishna causes us to be cling to this uh, these sense objects and this clinging causes our uh, will to be born and this causes again our birth and then we have uh, suffering sickness old age and death so this adheres to future life and this adheres to uh, present life so what in essence is uh, uh, the claim if we look at it as a whole is that well we are born and born because we have that fundamental embryonic consciousness and then because of that we feel ourselves as a psychophysical organism we have sense organs the sense organs get in touch with the world out there and that causes uh, experience sense experience that sense experience breeds desire and desire and attachment and this attachment causes us to be reborn and this again puts us through a cycle of uh, birth death uh, birth decay disease suffering and death so liberation from this is our uh, is is a uh, 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 the way to get uh, uh, away from uh, this cycle of dependent origination now this uh, 12 fold chain of causation is often referred to as dharma chakra or the wheel of becoming it is uh, referred to as bhava chakra or dwadash nidana so this is the nature of suffering now Uh, let us come to the third noble truth uh, 